Stan Jibalisco here to talk about five basic fundamental waveforms that you will encounter in electricity and electronics. You will find more information about all of this stuff in this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition. You will find this information in Chapter 9. This is the Amazon site for the paperback version of that book. And here is Chapter 9, Alternating Current Basics. And that is the chapter that we will look at now after we make another brief foray into outer space. The simplest kind of wave that you will encounter in electricity and electronics is known as a sine wave, S-I-N-E, -E, because it mimics the sine function, the trigonometric sine function. All sine waves are sine functions when graphed in amplitude versus time coordinates as you see here. Time proceeds from left to right, past to future in any graph like this, and amplitude basically means signal strength, but for all intents and purposes here we can also refer to it as instantaneous voltage, negative voltages going down, positive voltages going up. So for example each time increment might be one second and each vertical increment might be a volt plus one volt plus two volts plus three volts. In that case the period of the wave is the time it takes for one cycle to be completed. In this case six seconds one two three four five six you can see that and the amplitude or voltage if this is one volt per division looks like about 2.2 volts plus peak and 2.2 volts minus peak so that is the simplest possible wave in electricity and electronics and uh, ideally it would be what came out of your wall outlets although that's not always true. The next type of wave I'd like to talk about is known as a square wave. Square meaning that it squares off at the corners like this. What you will see if you look at a true square wave on an oscilloscope that shows voltage versus time is something like this up that you see up here in the graph at A. The transitions occur so rapidly between the positive and the negative that you can't even see them in a true square wave on an oscilloscope, but you will often see it graphed like that. And another characteristic of a square wave is that the positive and the negative voltage flat tops here last for equal lengths of time so that in this case, if we look at one second per division horizontally, then that lasts for a second at the positive voltage, that lasts for one second at the negative voltage, and the period, the time it takes to complete one cycle, is therefore two seconds, one complete iteration of the wave. That is known as a square wave, sometimes called a rectangular wave, although rectangular waves encompass a little bit more general type of, of uh, wave where the positive and negative uh, durations may not be the same. The next type of wave I'd like to talk about is known as a sawtooth because it rises instantly and then decays at a steady rate rise, decay, rise, decay, and here again if we consider one second increments on the horizontal axis, the time axis, then one cycle is this much. Two seconds is the period of that wave. Again we would normally think of amplitude in terms of positive and negative voltage. 
time in terms of seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, or even picoseconds. This is another form of sawtooth wave where it rises at a steady rate and then drops instantly. This type of wave is sometimes known as a ramp, R-A-M-P, because it's like a ramp going up with each cycle. And again, a full cycle, say starting here, lasts, it takes two seconds if we consider each horizontal increment as one second. Those are just arbitrary increments, by the way. They can be just about anything you want them to be. Same with the voltage. Now this particular type of wave is known as a triangular wave. It's not a true sawtooth. Sawtooth waves, actually, the ramp wave is a specialized form of sawtooth. These are sawtooth waves because they look kind of like the teeth of a, a cross-cut wood saw. But a triangular wave like this, it's referred to as triangular because of this shape like that. It has steady decay steady increase usually at the same slope so here one cycle you would start here and come back to the same point on the wave that would have a period if we have f one second per division of four seconds one two three four so those uh, waves are the common waves you're likely to encounter and combinations of those types of waves any of those five types of waves will give you just about any kind of wave you can imagine an irregular wave like this theoretically any wave can be broken down into an enormously complicated or oftentimes enormously complicated combination of sine waves with various amplitudes and various periods. Even my voice can be thought of that way. And to that end, I would like to show you what my voice waveform looks like on a computer program known as HamScope, which is, in fact, like an oscilloscope. Time on the horizontal axis voltage or amplitude on the vertical axis. I'm talking more quietly here because it's very easy for me to overload this program with the way that my microphone is set. But even this complicated wave like that, even that complicated a wave, ultimately, in theory, can be broken down into sine waves like that. So I would like to refer you back to my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 5th edition, available on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and if you can find a brick-and-mortar bookstore near you, ask for it there. I've seen it in some of the bookstores around uh, here in the Black Hills of South Dakota, but... Unfortunately, the Borders bookstore uh, no longer exists in Rapid City, and they used to carry lots of my books. They're gone. But this book, find it on Amazon.com. I will provide a link to this purchase page here for Amazon in the description of this video. Until next time... Stan Jibalisco saying so long from somewhere above some planet on some kind of a space station sometime past, present, or future. Who knows? So long.